called <laughs> that extra month. Now, interesting enough, which month are we adding? We're adding the happiest month, right? Adal Aleph and Adal Bed. There's going to be two Adals. So we're going to see why. Yes. How, how do you know either with a birthday or with a birthday when you celebrate? The question. That was my next thing. Very good. You're already uh, you're already preempting me. No. So usually you ask the rabbi. I know from the past, my father has the yard side for his father, and it's usually done the second Adam. Yeah, there's a there's a shaila in halacha. There's a shaila in halacha, but you have to ask your own question because the shaila in halacha. When is the adar? When is the, the adar? The importance of adar. Interesting. So we know that purim comes out in the second adar, right? That's when there's the mitzvot that we keep a purim, megillah, right? Matanot Evionim. We do the suda. Everything that relates to purim is in the second adar. Right, but there's a machloket about it. There's a machloket if it's the first adar or the second adar. It's not so pashut. But uh, that's actually what we're talking about today. But you will find that uh, as in my business, uh, in adar, that my original. Beautiful. So it is. So the, the this is the last month of the year according to the calendar, right? Um, when we start from Nisan. Nisan is the month of Geula. And Adar is the month right before the month of Geula. It's a cycle ending the year before Geula. It's bringing us to the Geula. So that's why we celebrate Pulim, right? Like you just said, closer to Nisan. And that is in the month of Adal Bet, not Adal Alem. But there are Shilas. If you have a bar mitzvah, when do you do it? If the parsha comes out, like she said, in the next month, right? So you always have to ask the Shaila to a rav. But I know for us, anyway, a yard side, you could still light a candle, right? You could still light a candle. The Allah says, when do you go to, to, to the Beis Chaim, right? All those kinds of Shilas. You always have to ask. And it had, maybe it has to do with the year also that the person was next there. You have to check, right? Could be it was a leap year as well. So that's something that comes in in halacha. But interestingly enough, what you're asking today is what really what we're talking about. Before we get to, I'm going to tell you just a little bit of information about um, what this month relates to in terms of our faculty of the body. The, the there's always a shevet that relates to the month, right? A tribe is always. Um, a letter that relates to the month is always something that we learn from the month. We have to learn from the energy of the month, right? This tremendous energy that we have that comes every single month. The month of Shvat was the month of Tikkun Ha'achila, fixing our eating habits. It has to do with the trees, right? It's the month, the Rosh Hashanah of the trees. That's what Tubi Shvat was, right? So every month we need to go into the depth of what this month is about. There's sparks of Kedusha that the month brings us and we want to connect with them. So we just said, And there's a, always, if you put it in the, the calendar on a cycle and you flip it, there's always a month that relates to it in the opposite. So we say, When is there a month that we say, Av, Av is the opposite month. We decrease our simcha. So what is, what's the connection? So we know if you want to have a court date, you should do it in the month of Av, because the, I'm sorry, Adar. <laughs> Don't do it in the month of Av. Do it in the month of Adar, because that's good mazal for Israel, right? It's good mazal for Israel. And why is that? Because we had, Good things happen for us, right? We know Vanafahu that Adal was supposed to be the month that Chas we were supposed to be exterminated. Haman wanted to kill all the Jews, right? La Rog, La Bed, it's called a Yudim. And instead, Vanafahu, he was hung. 
Mordechai and Esther became the one victorious, the leaders of Am Yisrael, tremendous nisim for Am Yisrael during this month. And in Av, it's not good mazal, it's the mazal of Asaf. It's the mazal of somebody who brought us bad things, right? And so we don't have a court date. We try to push it off, right? We try to decrease our simcha because that's the month where the two batemik dashot were destroyed. So we don't want to do things in a month that was destruction, in a month that relates to po'anut, right? To troubles for Am Yisrael throughout the generations. And so that's why it's the opposite. Now, what's so what what's the media of this month? What's so special about this month? We said increase our simcha. Which fact is that hook, hook, laughter? Right? Everybody tells jokes to each other when it comes to Adab. Because this is the Mida that brings us to Simcha. Why? Why is Tchok? What does Tchok have to do with anything? What does laughter have to do with anything? So laughter sometimes comes in a situation that's like ridiculous. Like something really funny happened. Like when you slip on a banana peel, right? And somebody slips and they, they fall, you laugh. Why do you laugh? That's not a nice thing. Because the unexpected happened. Something contradictory to what you thought was going to happen, happened. And then it's like... <laughs> Like, oh, that's so funny. Like, it really wasn't funny. Like, person hurt themselves. But, right? But it's something you didn't expect it to happen, right? The letter that relates to this month is the letter Kuf. Kuf is like, uh, like, uh, half a circle and a line longer, okay? And it also a monkey. What does a monkey have to do with chok, with laughter? Right? He does tricks and people laugh. Monkey see, monkey do. He imitates, right? And everyone laughs. So the, the monkey, yeah. That's right. That's right. They all laugh. Exactly. So the, this actually is what I was going to talk about. Yeah. Two kinds of laughter. Yeah. This sounds very modern, what you're just saying. Modern. <laughs> and I'm not, I, I can't understand how it goes with something from the past. I'm going to, it's, it's going to, you know how you start a share, you give a little tidbit, da, 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 and then it comes together. I can't give you the end before I start the. So there's two kinds of humor, actually. So there's a humor that's the classic humor. When one feels threatened or small, right? Like in history, there's a laughter of government, but they're called um, uh, sarcasm. Is it sarcasm? There's another one I'm thinking of. What? No, there's another one. Um, when a person is cynical. Cynical. Thank you. When a person is cynical, right? When there is somebody oppressing us, like a local government, right? In the past and history, right? Mm -hmm. In a way, it was like they were making fun, humorous, they were mocking, right? It says when one feels not powerful or inadequate in a certain situation, you don't feel comfortable, right? And it says that they can't change, they can't make a change. So what do they do? <laughs> They're laughing. Is that real laughter? Not really, right? It's like cynical. There's laughter like that because they're trying to release their form, their confinement. They they want to be in a different situation. So they laugh it off, like, you know, but it's not real, right? Laughter. There's another laughter that's considered a holy laughter, a holy talk. What's that? He says that this is Rapinson. He explains people are rooted in certain in a certain type of tradition, a certain type of sacredness right? This is who the person is. And he explains that laughter, like Ali was saying, releases that 
form releases where you contribute to attracting things, right? When sex did, right? Or they're trying to change and laugh because they're trying to tra- change the situation that they're in. And, and he says that, for example, like falling off a chair or like we mentioned the banana peel. So we're trying to come out of the constriction, so to speak, that we're at. We don't want to be there. So we laugh it off, right? So that's another kind of laughter. Where do we have in the Torah laughter? Yitzchak, right? Sarah, Abraham, they laughed. Was that a laughter that was uh, sarcastic? No. What kind of laughter is that? That's the holy laughter. Why? How could it be? 90 years old? Sarah told that she was mocking. Yeah, but it wasn't afterwards because it wasn't because she was surprised. 90 years old. I'm going to have a baby, right? Avraham, 100 years old. Where did you hear such a thing? It's not the normal. It comes out of the constriction of who you, you really are, right? This is not This is not funny. This is like weird, you know, like, come on. So interestingly enough, let me finish it. So laughter either can be cynicism, like we said, that a person is formless. He's coming out of where he's supposed to be unattached to anything. He laughs about anything. And then what happens? Somebody who's laughing in cynicism, he doesn't care about anything. Everything's meaningless, right? But the laugh that we're talking about, right? right? That kind of person is laughing, but then it's not so funny. It's like they're sad, really. It brings them down. And the person that might get depressed after that because then life has no meaning and has no form. It has no purpose. But the other laughter that we're talking about, the holy laughter, there's a certain quality that they're attached to that they can laugh about it and make light about it. Like, how could it be? Like, she's pregnant? What are you talking about? Right? That's a different kind of laughter. We're not putting anybody down. We're not being cynical. We're surprised. We're coming out of our form, out of our, what we thought, oh, she was barren. All of a sudden, she's not. She's pregnant. So listen to the beautiful thing. So Tchok, can I have a marker? Maybe I'll show it on the board where it's in there. So the month of the month of Shvat, let me tell you first, and I'll write it on. The month of Shvat is right before Adal. Okay. So here we see. That in the month of Tzadik, what comes after Tzadik? Kuf. If we write the word Tzchok, right? Mm-hmm. What's the letters for Tzchok? Tzadik, Chet, Kuf. Tzadik. <laughs> and we write the word Yitzchak, right? Yitzchak. I just don't want to see it because I want to write it the way that it's... Okay. What is the connection? Look at this interesting. Enough. How old was that? the letter Sadiq is 90? He had a baby. 100. 100. Which letter? Okay. If we take the letters Sadiq and Kuf, Kuf, what's the spell? Flip it around. Kids. Kids. Right? Kids. What's the kids? In. End. What was going on here with the whole story of Abraham and Sarah? Rav Pinson teaches us Adar is the end of the year before what? Nisan. Nisan is the first month when B'nai Israel became a nation, right? The end is the Ketz. Adar is the Ketz. It's the last month of the year from Nisan. Ketz also relates to the end of days, right? In the end of days, what are we going to do? It says, Az Yamale Chok Hinu. Az, then, Alat Zayin, 
is the eighth. It's lemala milateva. Eighth is above this world. As yimale, chok. I think it's other what I've seen, right? Yeah. Okay. But you could interchange it with a tadi. Chok pinu. Then our mouths will be filled with laughter. Why then? Because then we're going to have the revelation of what's really true in this world. It doesn't look like it's something real, right? What's happening here? Like when Sarah had a baby, how could it be? Then we'll fully laugh and we'll understand that everything that happened to us was good, right? We'll be able to be filled with laughter. Say we can't laugh fully because look what's happening. We're in war, right? We can't be completely the simcha. There are people who are sick. There are people who are poor. But that's what we're saying that the end is really teaching us that talk comes from something that looks like it's not free. It's not itself. It's coming out of its form. It's coming out of what's real, what's reality. What's then? Then at the end of days, we'll be able to look back and say, wow, there's, wow, this is like a miracle what happened. That's something sad. It's something happy. Right? Hashem saved me. Hashem spared me. Look what Hashem did for me. You understand? So the cats from the talk, from Yitzchak, Tzachak, right? The Tzadik and the Kuf. It's the end. The end, we're going to see. Oh, now I am. Right? And from Yitzchak, we have all. So, Israel. Right? From Avram, from Yitzchak. The future, we see the Geula, we see the revelation of good being born. Right? We can't fall through everything that's happening. This world is next. And um, um, it says also about Adarbet that, that we look at the word also, it's like Ketiv. Kuf, Tadik, Bet. Kesef is rhythm. It says Adar Bet teaches us like the music, the rhythm, that everything flows, that everything is, right? We understand the, the purpose of everything because Adar Bet's extra laughter. It's extra simcha. That we're getting even closer to the Geula in Nisan. Nisan is a Geula. It's the month that we're going to be redeemed. Bezrat Hashem this year, the Geula. So, let me talk about a little bit the, the letter Kuf, which we started talking about. So we said that Kof is a monkey, right? So a monkey does things and we're like, haha, we're laughing. It doesn't make sense to us. How could it be? What, what, a monkey is not a man. He's an animal, right? But Maase Kof, it's humorous. It's something that's not rooted. It's something that doesn't, doesn't make sense. Like, how could it be? He's acting like this. It's, it, it looks like it's real, but it's not. And this is the relationship to talk. The kuf also relates to the talk that we laugh. We think it's like funny. How could it be that this monkey is acting like this? And this, this letter kuf is teaching us that we need to be grounded, right? We're not here up there. Ha, 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 everything's funny. We have to be grounded. Grounded humor brings us to joy, brings us to true simcha. Now, kuf relates to kain. As opposed to a hey, if we cut off the line from the cool, it looks like, like right. longer. That's a cool. So the hey is heaven. What's heaven mean? Heaven is the name of Kain's brother. Nothing. Nothingness. It's like Shtuya, uh, Tevel, right? And Kuf is is more grounded. The kuf has a longer line. Like we said, simcha, that's grounded. It's connected. And what does that relate? We know that, um, I'm going to read from here, that Cain, Hevel represented somebody without roots, ethereal, detached. He wasn't really connected to reality, right? He thought he was going to get everything. Cain represents something that's deeply rooted. Cain was a farmer, right? Chaim was the farmer. So he's more connected to the ground. He's more grounded, right? This is why it relates to Chaim. It's a little deep. He's 
chances, but I think you ladies can handle it. So here we see that this is something that's teaching us what we're going back to. I want to say one more thing before I get into it more deeper. The, the, the body part that relates to the 